When Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy met, it was like hate at first sight. If you've read Pride and Prejudice, you'd be familiar with their complicated relationship, Elizabeth rejecting Darcy's proposal and the letter that followed. What you may not realise is the act of reading Jane Austen could make you more intelligent. Defining human intelligence is complex and has been controversial among psychologists. It includes your capacity for reasoning, planning, problem solving, abstract thought, self-awareness, communication, creativity and learning, to name a few. In the 1960s, psychologist Raymond Cattell theorised that intelligence could be broken down into two types, crystallised and fluid intelligence. Crystallised intelligence is the ability to use the knowledge you've built up from what you've learnt and experienced, like knowing the elements of the periodic table or the names of the spells in Harry Potter. Akia. Fluid intelligence is the capacity to think logically and solve problems, independent of acquired knowledge, like solving a Rubik's Cube or planning how to escape the clutches of evil. But these don't consider our emotional knowledge. In the 1980s and 90s, emotional intelligence was popularised. It's your ability to perceive, control and evaluate others' emotions. It makes sense that reading a book would increase your vocabulary and general knowledge, your crystallised intelligence. Though research has shown that reading fiction can increase your emotional intelligence too. In one study, researchers found that participants who read extracts from literary novels performed significantly better on tests measuring empathy, social perception and emotional intelligence than those who read non-fiction or popular fiction. The tests included tasks like looking at people's eyes and guessing what emotions they're experiencing. The researchers suggested that reading literary fiction enhances theory of mind, the ability to imagine and understand the mental states of others. Some measures of intelligence, like an IQ score, are positively correlated with achieving high marks in school and earning more money in the workplace. But it's been suggested that having more emotional intelligence could be a more accurate predictor of your life trajectory than standard academic measures. Data from one study that followed 17,000 infants over 50 years found that a child's level of mental well-being correlated strongly with future success, having a higher educational achievement and higher ranking job. While reading more is a start, it can depend on how you read. When researchers asked people to either skim or closely read Jane Austen inside a fMRI machine, as you do, the two reading styles led to an increase in blood flow in different areas of the brain. Close reading unexpectedly activated parts of the brain involved in movement and touch, like readers were placing themselves in the story. These are all novel findings, but they do only measure short-term benefits of a small amount of fiction. Measuring and increasing your intelligence isn't as simple as the wave of a wand. Wingardium Leviosa. While it's still hard to say if being a bookworm will make your emotional intelligence soar, we do know that we can train our emotional competence to learn about our own emotions and those of others. As the author Richard Steele once said, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Speaking of intelligence, it's been said that our crystallised intelligence increases as we age, where our fluid intelligence decreases as we get older. So is there a point where they overlap and we hit our mental peak? When will we be the smartest we'll ever be in our lives? However you would define that. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll include your answers in my next episode, out next week. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Braincraft. Evanesco.